wondering as a fan, you know, it was so emotional for me. What was it like watching it after being such a big part of your life for these last few years? So I, it's been quite a profound experience for me in the sense that each time I've watched the season, but very much so with season three, it's the first time I've ever felt this with anything. I've forgotten that I'm in the show because I've been so emotionally invested that I literally feel like I'm watching it just as just as everybody else, you know, as a fan in my living room. And I, I don't know if I'll get to experience that again because you really get lost in in everybody's storylines and how, like you said, the emotional journeys that they take you on and how invested you get in that. And I got to have a very special moment of watching the finale with a group of the cast that were in LA so we got to all watch it together. And uh, I mean, it was, obviously it was emotional, lots of tears, but also it was it's so interesting who laughs at which jokes and all of this. And it's just a really special group of people who are, they so lead with their hearts, you know, and so we're all, such fans of what each other do on the show and but I really mean that you I kind of forget that I'm in it and that I, that that to me is pretty wild you know because you're just invested in what everyone's gonna do next and what's happening mm. for that person and oh my gosh they're crossing now and it's like and I found this season was such an emotional roller coaster 11 broke me into a million pieces <laughs> and then 12 I was just I was so proud of AFC Richmond as a team. I thought the whole arc from the beginning of season one for those boys, that, those brilliant, brilliant young men and athletes and actors, but also friends and just gorgeous humans starting off kind of being much more scattered as a team. And by the end, you really, really saw that they had become a family that they had chosen, you know, and I thought yeah I thought that was so brilliantly done and I thought they did that so magically they just yeah I, I so loved loved that camaraderie at the end with that team and um that made me quite emotional for sure that's great and and I, it, I mean I think it hit everybody that that finale was just so the last two episodes just you, you know you're seeing the ending coming and it's just like it, it was unfair it shouldn't have you know we should have had a, a great, disclaimer at the bottom. Great two, uh, like, really hilarious highlights in the last one was opening with Coach Beard in a red thong and a darkness t-shirt and then <laughs> finding out his real name. I was like, oh, what is Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so many big reveals. Huge. So Geely takes on a, a lot of challenges this season. How do you yeah. feel she's evolved since we first met her in season one? I think that she, I mean, it's like, it's genuinely as huge as coming from a caterpillar into a butterfly. You know, I really think it's that much of a transformation. Um, but meanwhile, remaining true to herself. And that's something that I so respect and love about her. Um, but as we see her go through season three, you know, she's become the boss of her own PR company, right? And that's actually her office and her business that she's running and I think the excitement and the kind of joy that she wants to bring into the office is something that these people haven't experienced really before and that's something that is very innate to her nature that she wants people to enjoy the workspace as well as their home space that work should be fun as well as work and I think you know she believes in people and some it didn't work out entirely with Shandy and I think in a way that you know, Shandy would be great in a different PR company. And I think she's probably going to go forth and conquer the world in many different ways. And I'm sure that Keely and her remain friends. But it's a big learning experience for Keely because she has to ultimately, obviously it's going to hurt somebody's feelings being let go. But she has to do that by, because she's accountable for it not working in her office space and cohesively with the clients that she's working with. And so she has to learn to actually let somebody go, which I don't think Keely would be good at. It's like, I don't think she would be great at any kind of breakup. I mean, no, I know we saw the one with Jamie in season one, but that was definitely a flash decision. It was a moment by like, boom. Um, <clears throat> and as we learned throughout this season, that it was Roy that ended it with her. So I'm not sure she's good at delivering any version of bad news. So that was something she had to learn about, but she also had to stand up for Shandy with, 
Barbara, who is somebody who I think is used to not having people try and be friends with her, Barbara, right? She's used to being a corporate leader and, or as Keely calls her, a corporate flying object, but <clears throat> Keely won't let that happen. She's going to be friends with the people she works with. And I like that it takes a little longer than Keely, I think, would have hoped. But when Barbara reacts, to Shandy being hired, Keely has to go and handle that and go and handle that again with grace and dignity. And, and then also she learns something about Barbara in that moment, you know? And I think mm -hmm. whilst becoming the head of this company and, and being excited and doing something that she loves that her mentor, Rebecca, has pushed her to do, she is learning how hard it is, but also how you can do things that are difficult with dignity and grace and and try not to hurt people's feelings you know even if if you do things with kindness even if the news isn't what they want to hear you're doing it coming from a good place right and and then obviously you know she ends up dating her the, the financier of her company and then that goes wrong um and that goes wrong over something in Keely's past and I thought that was so brilliantly handled actually because how complicated if you had a tape like that, a private message that you'd sent to a past lover get released, but you are the head of the PR company. You're not the one dealing with helping your clients deal with that. So I think the confusion that she would feel with that, the only person that she can go talk to about it is Rebecca, you know, because I think in that moment, she genuinely isn't sure. Should I be ashamed of it because I'm the boss of the company or should I? do I need to apologize for it? And these are things that I, I love Keely for because she doesn't know everything and she doesn't try to know everything. And so she's, she still wants to ask questions so she can be better and do better at her job, but also be accountable, you know, because that's something that I think we saw from season one is becomes a very important thing for Keely. Um, and then ultimately you know the company gets taken away from her and I think that was another journey that was really interesting for her because we haven't seen her kind of hit a version of rock bottom before she's she's always been able to be the kind of light for the people around her and she goes very inward you know and and I think that was an interesting thing because I think she feels like she's not good enough to do the job and then the minute Rebecca shows up at her house without a flicker of any other thought she's like of course you're you're brilliant you're brilliant and it's not about keely failing it's about this one didn't work out so let's figure out how to do it again and i think um that's that's why keely gets to keep doing what she's doing because she has people around her that even when she really doesn't believe in herself they continue to believe in her and also with the boys that have been in in her life you know these brilliant men who have been in past relationships with her and still have complicated feelings for her and she for them they both come and surprise her this season and and I think that's something that's uh another little you know sort of kick in the butt to remember that you shouldn't mm -hmm. assume somebody is what they are when you haven't checked in with them for a while like when she's talking with Shandy about Jamie and she's saying these things but they actually no I actually know and she's realizing as she's saying it maybe it's not the same person and so I think these little lessons that she's getting throughout and she she really I think takes on the lessons that she's learning um and so when Jamie showed up at the door I think that moment was so so many feelings for her one of just being so grateful and needing a bloody hug but also proud that he came and did that and being like wow that was really cool that you did that um so yeah, she's got a lot of things going on this season. She had such a, a yeah. really, which ends with her presenting an idea to her mentor that was so badass, getting to go into Rebecca's office and present the AFC Richmond women's football team. I thought that was a really, again, from beginning to of season one to end of season three, the fact that she is presenting Rebecca with an idea mm -hmm. like that and that Rebecca's excited about it what a huge arc right yeah, and that Barbara's grown. behind it too <laughs> <laughs>
in the end, she chooses neither Jamie nor Roar. Mm. And that shocked everybody. Did it shock you when you saw the script? Uh, it didn't with that scene, no. Because I think that scene was, I think, a moment where she's looking at them being like, this is how you're going to handle this? You guys are bigger than that. <laughs> Figure it out and I'll talk to you about it later. Do you know what I mean? It's like, so in that moment, it didn't shock me. Uh, did it shock me that she didn't end up with, I mean, I've always thought that it was it was going to be her and Roy in the end. And so, mm. yeah, there was an element of that that surprised me. But, you know, I do think that, um, I, I don't remember how what the conversation exactly was about, but I remember Jason saying, you know, these characters obviously they go on continue living their lives whether we see that on tv or not so who knows what the future would bring yeah well I was, that's what i was going to say it's like it's it's not over you don't know this it doesn't seem like an end this isn't no you know, and I maybe think down the line like, she'll be in a place where she's ready for that relationship totally she needs to focus on this company again now and restarting mm -hmm. it and rebuilding it right and also i think that when they show up to her house like that they've still got stuff to figure out. They've still got to figure <laughs> out, you know, a little bit more and a little bit more. Um, they've got work to do together still. I mean, we all yeah, do, we, don't we? Always, it's always, we're always evolving and, and yeah. But I think that was um, a way of saying that none of them are quite ready to make a, you know, a romantic mm -hmm. commitment because they've got things that they need to do for themselves before they would be the right person to be with. And Rebecca and Keely had such a special relationship, one of the best in the series, if not the best. What what was it that made it so special? What do you think? What did it tap into? I think it's about the fact that, honestly, Hannah is oh, truly one of the greatest humans to come into my life thus far, ever. She's so extraordinary and she's so nurturing, but also um so brave and so fun and can be elegant and then a total klutz and then uh doesn't take herself too seriously and is curious and just all the things that I am in awe of with her the list is too long to ever I think complete but so that happening off camera was something really important but then this this journey between these two women who are very very different and have come from very different backgrounds but also actually have a lot in common that they can help each other with. And I think the thing that's been so special about it is just putting a female friendship out in the world that is not about being competitive. And it's not about being one thing to a woman's face and another thing behind her back. It is a, about a genuine friendship, which sometimes means you have to call people out on their shit. And it sometimes means you need to cry on somebody's very expensive blouse or you need to encourage somebody that they are as beautiful as you can see them when they don't feel it on the inside or that they have more brains than they do just boobs, you know, whatever it is, um, without there being any expectation of needing anything back. And I think just getting to put a female friendship out there that is genuinely about loving and respecting a woman in your life has been one of the most important things I've done thus far in my career. And one of the things that I will forever be the most proud of because female friendships are so important and they aren't competitive and bitchy and it gets boring as hell to watch that. And so to get mm. to see these women continuously learning from each other, but also supporting each other and encouraging each other to just enjoy every single aspect of who they are even when it's not easy um i think has been yeah one of the greatest takeaways of, of ted lasso for me for sure that's beautiful um and as you know the fan not you know the actress do you have a favorite part of this whole journey the on-screen journey besides keely's yeah. that you can what, what what did you get the most joy out of watching well, season three, I really enjoyed Roy and Jamie's relationship, actually. I thought it was a really brilliant friendship to watch happen, and it made me laugh, but it also made me emotional. Um, Trent Krim joining was really brilliant to me, and he is so, Jamie Lance was so great in this show from beginning to end, but the fact 
he came and joined the team the way he did in this season and helped so many of the players through certain moments, I thought was really spectacular. Um, I, I love always watching Hannah. I just, of Rebecca, I, I, I can watch her do anything. Um, it's quite hard to say what is the most enjoyable part, actually, to be honest with you, because everything, you know, the team, <laughs> it's, it's quite hard. Or oh, Higgins, who's just so brilliant too. And then Beard and Ted, this quirky, brilliant bromance is just like, yeah, these wacky words of wisdom and their private language that they speak, but one that really, you know, changed things for the better at that team. Um, and Nate too, coming back the way he did and the emotion that he went through. And I, I don't know how to pick a favorite. I really don't. Yeah. It's a tough question, but I don't know if there's just one thing that you're just, you know, tapped into is really hit you. But so I mean, going the, look... I think the panic attacks too. I think the exploration of talking about that has been something that is, I, I found really important, and it's been cool having people say how how important that's been. You know, maybe their dad suddenly has had a panic attack, and they get to talk about it together. And the fact that the kind of avenues of mental health it's opened up, I think, is also something mm -hmm. really really great. Um, but that's something I guess more serious from it um, because otherwise I don't know it's such a teamwork show it's quite hard to sing, single out one yeah. thing truly is every scene you're like you're interested in what happens with every character that's Everybody. on the screen and they, so, such, there's such an array of different stories and people and, and backgrounds and challenges mm -hmm. and it's you know it's a joy to watch yeah. so where where do you see Keeley in 10 years <sighs> Um, I hope she's still got her PR firm and I hope she's got, uh, an entire, you know, pride of, uh, no, what is the thing of cheetahs? Um, I know it's a leap of leopards, but I don't know how, what you call a collection of cheetahs, you know, her pink cheetah. I hope she's got lots mm -hmm. of them. Um, and I hope that she... I hope that she's happy. I hope that she feels happy in when she goes home and no one's there. And when she goes home and she's got friends over or, you know, I also hope she ends up I, I, in my heart of hearts. I would hope that Jamie Tart at some point turns around to Roy and says, mate, what are you doing? You love her. Go get the girl. And then he does. And then they end up all being able to be really great friends. Um, that's kind of something that I, I would hope. And, you know, I hope that if she was to have a kid, that Rebecca would be the godmother. Um, but I, I hope, I hope she doesn't change. You know, I hope she's still a, a rainbow that works her ass off and that, you know, when things are tough, she learns from them. Um, and I hope she continues to surprise people and be surprised by people but um yeah I hope she gets to go on a holiday too I think it would be cool if her and Rebecca <laughs> went on a holiday somewhere and they could actually sunbathe topless <laughs> that could be a movie a movie spin-off yeah exactly oh my god Keely and Rebecca go on holiday can you imagine <laughs> that's a great that idea be, that could be the title yeah I love that so close with a real quick one three words to describe Keely at the end of season three, at the end of this series? Mm. Three words? Twinkling work in progress. I, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed Thank your work you. and, and speaking with you about it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too. Have a great day.